Actually, I'm not the person who is interested so much in small details. So I'm always looking for a bigger picture. And therefore, when people show me their data, I'm always asking them, where is the story? I think to find out, to ask the right question and to find a big story, I think that's a major issue. I think there are different types of researchers. Some people, they, um, they define themselves via a particular project or a particular method, but this is not how Stefan approaches science. I think for him to be able to answer certain interesting questions, no matter whether he has worked on them before or not, this is, this is what drives him and this was very interesting to me as well. The researchers and scientists at the Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry in Martinsried near Munich are specialized in research into proteins that are of fundamental importance to cells and their evolution. The Nobel Prize has already been awarded on two occasions to teams from this institute, which is dedicated to scientific research. And this is where Stefan Jentsch went in 1998 to continue his research into ubiquitin. Well, ubiquitin and ubiquitin-like proteins function in cells like little switches, so they are decision makers. And, um, and these molecules then can really decide what the cell has to do. And, and this for us means that we also have to change directions all the time because we want to study the individual functions. And that's what I really enjoy working on ubiquitin because we can change directions and I really like to, to work on different subjects. I could not work for all my life just on one single question or one single protein. By studying ubiquitin, we really come into different areas. How many substats you found so far? Stefan Jentsch rapidly built up a team of enthusiastic and fully committed young researchers. Um, he's not interested all, only in the science, but also in the persons he works with. Um, he really takes care about the recruiting the people, so he wants to have a good atmosphere in the lab, he wants the people to get along with each other. And yeah, this is really nice. I see that uh, probably Stefan's lab is one of the labs where uh, most people really go along very well. So I guess this is also his, his uh, style. So when he, he chooses a new person, he sees that how this new person would fit to, to the department what he has uh, running already. Uh, to me it's very important to pick the right people. And uh, to me it's a privilege to work with young intelligent people. And, uh, and I really always had a very nice group. And, it's very important to me that they can succeed in science, that they can follow their career. And, uh, and I think in addition to doing research to, to foster the careers of young students and postdocs, I think that's a very important issue. Reporter, which we already... And that's the strongest mutation. Yeah, so that's the, the most stronger mutation. You can see that already there's a quite a large and um, growing group of um, people who have done their PhD or postdoc with them and they are actually doing very well in their scientific and academic careers and I think this tells you that, that he's a good teacher and I think most importantly he teaches people how to think independently, critical thinking I think this is, this is one thing that I, that I learned with him. It's by asking themselves the right questions that Stefan Jentsch and his team undertake their groundbreaking research into ubiquitin. Discoveries in this field could lead to a better understanding of how certain diseases such as cancer develop and could also point to appropriate therapeutic treatment. I am convinced that some of our discoveries may actually um, be important at some point also for patients. Um, but of course it is even more difficult to use that as a motivation because it is so far ahead and you never know how uh, things will develop in that time. Yeah, this, is, this is certainly the, the biggest problem in science and, and it's not only uh, that you don't know what's coming because, because you either some discover something or you don't, mostly you don't, but it's also that you can work years and years and there is nothing visible behind you if you if you build a house you at least have the house at the end if you are scientists you you st still don't have anything visible in your hands and uh, and it is 
it must be the curiosity, the in internal curiosity, and the need to understand the things, and and, and believing into the um, in the importance of understanding the things. And this is definitely also something what Stefan has and what he is able to to bring to his students. Although we are not uh, doing a lot of research which directly has clinical implication, people still. Uh, uh, see the significance and it's really good that we the research what we do uh, really gets uh, or is recognized by people of different fields. For researchers, the award of the Louis Jonte Prize for Medicine represents true recognition of their work and real encouragement. It provides confirmation to scientists that all the time they spend in labs running often long and tedious experiments is indeed worthwhile. Stefan Jensch never had any doubt about that, nor that his future was to be in research. As a boy, his interest was in geology, but in the end he focused his attention on biology and particularly genetics. He has an inquiring mind, and this natural curiosity sometimes leads him to close the doors of his lab for a while to focus on different areas in a continuing quest for new knowledge. Stefan Jensch travels the world, especially Asia and the Middle East, in pursuit of his wide range of interests, geopolitics, history, the arts, architecture, design. This seemingly quiet man is full of surprises. Personally, I met him first time about uh, three years ago and uh, I was very surprised because I knew his work and uh, I did not meet him ever before. And uh, in the first moment I was surprised because he turned out to be a very quiet person. And uh, later when I knew him better, I, I found out how, how actually witty and funny he is. And he has a very interesting sense of humor, slightly ironic, maybe, maybe sometimes even a little black. And I found it very, very interesting. And still, there is always coming this, this need to understand things until the bottom of every question. So yeah, this picture was originating from the last Christmas party where everybody uh, had to brew certain uh, people or whatever. And then uh, the result of uh, me picking Stefan's name was then uh, this picture. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's quite famous here in the lab because he always, uh, you always see him with his um, cup. Yeah, he's quite addicted to that, I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>